the no-till farming and the soil degradation that happens with tilling and modern egg practices are you obviously then a big supporter of you know biodynamic farming permaculture organic no-till farming would you recommend that people include those foods in their diet with what you know well i started uh, eating organic as much as i could a while back before i even found this out but sort of thought that this is probably happening we're not you know, uh, if there's not organic uh, blueberries or whatever, I'll buy the other ones, you know. I'm not real hard about that, but I do think it's worth... So I'm really pushing regenerative agriculture, mm-hmm. which, uh, again, they have all these terms, but or restorative agriculture. And I mentioned that in this paper that no-till is one of the factors. Uh, multiple use of cover crops, reduced use of pesticides and, and uh, synthetic fertilizers, all this thing. Unfortunately, the, the only one that we've been able to document so far is the, is the uh, no-till. But we do know some of the other practices influence the microflora in the soil. So I think there's a lot more to be learned there. But unfortunately, haven't had the uh, chance to uh, look at it. However, our work with uh, Rodale, I think, is about to take a Positive, real positive turn. I think we've uh, secured a, a big grant to uh, look in that. However, I'm told we were not allowed to. Uh, <laughs> the funders don't want it to be announced. So, but hopefully that uh, that will turn the, the corner on, on more of this. But I've had contact with people, uh, soil scientists around, and whatever. For example, there's a guy named David Montgomery who's a professor at the University of Washington written several books about uh, soil health. So there's a big movement to equate soil health and human health. And a lot of talk is done. However, as far as I can tell, there's no way to show there's a connection. But I think that ergothionine is the thing that can show the connection because it has to come from the soil. It's getting into the plants, getting into the food chain from the microbes in the soil. And everyone will tell you that soil health is correlated with microbial populations in the soil. So they say microbial health in the soil and soil health are one and the same. And everybody's saying there is a relationship between soil health and human health. And I think we've got the connection. Wow. I've been working on a paper now that, that's going to actually have that title in it. I'm really excited about that. I think there is something to it. It really worries me when people say, oh, let's grow everything uh, hydroponically, you know. Well, if that's if everything if all our vegetables end up being grown hydroponically, we're not going to have any ergothionine in there. Right? Yeah, there'd be none. Eh? At least unless something else is done. Mm. And got, but of course, nobody knows this. People don't know. And um, I've tried to talk to some people about it, but so far it's not caught on. Anyway, I think there's a lot to be learned, and there's probably a lot of other things that are in there other than just ergothionine that we don't even know about. In fact, this uh, Bruce Ames with his triage theory published a paper a year or so ago in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. It's referenced in the paper I gave you. And he has like eight compounds that he calls longevity vitamins. And ironically, or not around, three of them are in mushrooms. That's the vitamin D, the selenium, and the ergothionine that he all includes as, a, as what he calls longevity vitamins. 